Do I need to use the microphone? No. Okay, good, because I'll always forget it or forget to push the button or something. <laughs> um, that is our goal every day, is to be God's instrument. Amen. At Thunderbird Adventist Academy, that is our focus, is to train young people to be God's instrument every day. Because when we open ourselves to that, we can truly be blessed. We, we, we raised our hands that yes, we needed blessings, well, folks, let's open our lives to receive God, and we will have the blessings we need. It's a thrilling life to walk with God. The very final psalm in the whole book of Psalms, is Psalm 150, where the psalmist wrote about praising the Lord with everything he could think of. And then at the end he said, and if you're breathing... Praise the Lord, because he didn't want to leave anything out. So folks, if you have breath this morning, praise the Lord. Amen. If you don't, we better call 911. <laughs> okay? We are here to praise. We want to praise with you. And so we're going to do an arrangement of that song. It's called Psalm 150. And um, it's a little different than maybe you have heard other arrangements of Psalms 150. It's written by a Brazilian composer. And if you don't understand the words, that's okay. Because unless you speak ancient Latin, you're not going to understand the words. Okay? Um, it is in Latin, but you can understand that the whole thing is about praising the Lord. Super, 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 super
Bibles, please, to Exodus 40. The last part of Exodus is talking about building the sanctuary in the wilderness and following God's instructions and all the beautiful things that were created and made for that. And then at the end of chapter 40, verse 34, the cloud. Do you understand what cloud we're talking about? It just says the cloud. What cloud was that? I'm a teacher, so you can, you can respond, okay? <laughs> it was the cloud that was leading them, right? The pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. Can you imagine that cloud shading them in the desert sun? Boy, there are some summer days I'd like a cloud to shade me in the desert sun here in Arizona. Okay, so that is the cloud. That was God's presence leading them through the wilderness. That cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses, Moses who was the person who at that point, I think on planet earth, was the closest to God of anybody else. Moses when he was unable to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud rested on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. When was the last time you came to church and God's presence was so full in this room that you had a hard time even getting in the door? Wow, isn't that an awesome thought? It happened one other time in Scripture when Solomon built his temple, 2 Chronicles. And when Solomon is dedicating the temple that he had, had built for God, God's presence came in a cloud and filled that temple to where nobody could get close. The next song we're going to do is all about God getting close to his people through his spirit and light. It's called Luke's Nova. And just a few of the words... You wondered where I was going with that, didn't you? <laughs> Light, warm and heavy as pure gold, and the angels sing softly in the presence of God. So the song is composed with the idea that this light just surrounds us and envelops us and wraps around us so that we feel that presence of God here with us this morning.
speaks of such honesty. Here I am, but I got problems. I got issues, Lord. <laughs> I want to do it myself. But please take my heart and seal it for you. Seal it for you. That's what it's all about, folks. The Christian life. Living our life with God in us, through us, to the world around us. Are you solidly connected with God? Are you anchored in his word? You come to church on Sabbath, but does it make a difference in your life? There's a spiritual that expresses that feeling. <clears throat> My soul has been anchored in the Lord. It's there, God. Hallelujah. Praise his name, glory. I can live my life because I am anchored Amen. in him. My 
souls been anchored in the Lord. Do you love him? Oh, yes. Do you love him? Hallelujah. Do you love him? Oh, yes. God Almighty. Are you anchored? Are you anchored? Oh, yes. Yes, I Yes, am. my souls been anchored in the Lord. Yes. Will you serve him? Will you serve him? Oh, yes. Will you serve him? Hallelujah. Will you serve him? Oh, yes. God Almighty. Are you anchored? Are you anchored? Oh, yes. Yes, I Yes, my souls been anchored in the Lord. Will you praise him? Will you praise him? Oh yes. Will you praise him? Hallelujah. Will you praise him? Oh yes. God Almighty. Are you anchored? Yes, I'm anchored. Lord, I'm anchored. Oh yes. Lord, I love you. Oh yes. Yes, I'll serve you. Oh yes. Lord, I'll praise you. Oh yes. Hallelujah. My soul's been anchored in the Lord. God Almighty, my been anchored. Adventist Academy, Mr. Jeff Rogers, and he has made it a point to try to get out to the churches, and he just follows us around everywhere we go. I don't know if it's to keep track of us and make sure we behave, or because he just really enjoys it. He says he enjoys it. So anyway, Mr. Rogers. I'm their number one groupie. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to take a moment every time we are at the churches, for, uh, primarily to say thank you. Um, your support both financially as well as spiritually, uh, means a lot to Thunderbird. And so it's, a, it's with a heavy heart, a thankful heart, that I say very much thank you um, with that. And because of that, I'd like to report back to you a little bit some of the things that we're doing. So at Thunderbird, our mission is for our kids to excel, which means to uh, experience Jesus, uh, communicate clearly, embrace service, and to live healthfully. And so... In that, we, we try to tailor some of our activities to embrace those ideas that we have. One of the big things we just did, uh, Ashley, let's see, Emmanuel on the piano, anybody else with us on Brazil? Dakota, yes, sorry, I gotta forget Dakota, Kylie, Elizabeth, oh yeah, I have pictures of all you guys. So, uh, we just got back Sunday, right? Sunday? And, and uh, it's been a... We slept, we slept at hammocks for a whole week on a boat down in the Amazon. Um, it was pretty awesome to be down there. And these kids did just incredible things. Uh, the, the bond that we had with the community there in Brazil, when we left, there was tears and everything else. And, but the, it goes to show that wherever you go in the world, there's brothers and sisters in Christ. And that we have that bond that, we can, that connect us. And so it was a lot of fun, um, but it was also a lot of work um, being down there. But part of what we look at of helping others in, in service and experience of Jesus kind of all wrapped up into one um, on that. Um, we've got uh, big events happening. In fact, tomorrow we have a group coming, uh, part of our WASC accreditation. There's a team that comes from California from a variety of schools and will be here for three days on our campus as they work with us and we look for another six-year term of accreditation for our school. But that's kind of got us all on, at least the staff anyway, on pins and needles right now, trying to get everything ready for that. I even washed windows yesterday. Washed windows, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> uh, Then right after that, next weekend is our alumni weekend. And so we've got a big activities going on. So we literally, we say goodbye to WASP, we say hello alumni. Um, but I guess we pack it all in to get our campus looking great for two big events. So it, I don't know. Maybe it's conserving energy, but um, we've got a lot of good, neat things for alumni weekend. So if I know we got a big hike for next next Sabbath, but if you're not going hiking, feel free to come down to alumni weekend. Friday night we have a, a nice program, and then all day Sabbath a variety of events that happen um, on our campus. Um, I wanted to mention real quickly something about my friend Ben here, and I know he loves this. It's his favorite part. <laughs> Um, but this is Ben's last year at Thunderbird, and um, yes, I know, shocking, I you know. Um, but what Mr. Purvis has done for Thunderbird in recent years has been pretty phenomenal, and he is moving to Idaho 
Um, supposedly in retirement, although I don't see this man ever retiring. So <laughs> I see him active in his church and everything else up there doing choir and et cetera. So um, but just a heartfelt thanks to Mr. Purvis for everything he's done. Because the voices that you hear here are just... Um, I've never sat this close, so it's a little uh, unnerving a little bit, but at the same time, it feels like the angels are singing to me, so I'm going to enjoy it the rest of the, the time here. So thank you so much for everything, just, and thank you guys for waking up early this morning, that bus ride up the mountain and everything, so I appreciate you guys' ministry that you guys feel like doing it right now. So thank you, Ms. Purvis. Thank you. You prompted a thought, and I see I need to retire. It was like, actually, I'm not retiring because I want to quit teaching. I'm retiring because I have 40 years of service in for the church, and my mother and father-in-law need someone to move close to them, to take care of them. They're in their late 80s. So my wife and I see this as a really opportune time for us to move up there close to them. We have no clue what we're going to do where we're going to live, any of those things, pray for us because we feel like we're stepping off the cliff. Uh, but we know God has led us this far. He's not going to leave us alone now. He has a plan, and he has laid the burden on our hearts to move close to our parents, and um, so that's why I'm doing it. Um, so I don't know what the other thought was. It was really important. Um, <laughs> It was not important. We have some sophomore guys that have formed a group, and they are going to do a number for you right now. <coughs> bum, bum, ba -da -da -bum. about talking to the Lord at the end of the day and then the, what was, what's, this, what's the second verse about? 
Which oh, they're going to sleep. Like pray to God to give them another day. Yeah, I said that, but then what's the next oh. one? <laughs> then it's just us singing on cappella. Okay. Okay. I remembered my other thought, and it is a very important <laughs> one. Because uh, Mr. Rogers, you know, talked about the wonderful things I have done at Thunderbird, but it's not me. It's God. Amen. My life is an example of the fact that when God calls you for a ministry, he enables you to fulfill that call. Yes. And he is the one that has done, yes, I have permitted him to use me, but he's the one that's done it. And I just want to keep that straight. Okay, because folks, he can do it in your life too. If you will just open your life to him, he can use you in a mighty way to minister to others for him. So open your life to him. Several years ago, I was introduced to a song um, that was a beautiful song, and I thought it was just really awesome, and we, we sang it. And I did some research on it to find out what motivated the composer to write this song. So I'm going to share some, some thoughts with you. This is his testimony on his website. He says, I actually wrote the song out of frustration over a horrendous civil war and ethnic cleansing that was taking place in the former country of Yugoslavia. He had lived in Yugoslavia for a number of years, had friends there. And as he was here in America watching the TV on the events that were taking place over there, um, he was just horrified. Um, when Yugoslavian President Tito died, different political factors jockeyed for position and the inevitable happened, civil war. Suddenly my friends were pitted against each other. A Serbian brother wouldn't talk to a Croatian sister-in-law. Bosnian mother would disown her Serbian son-in-law. And on and on it went. Meanwhile, all I could do was stay glued to the TV back in the U.S. and sink deeper into a sense of hopelessness. Finally, one night I began channeling these deep feelings into a wordless melody. Then little by little I added words. Can you hear? Can you feel? I started with these feelings, the sensations, that the children might be experiencing struggling to live in a difficult time. Whether they were Serbian, Croatian, or Bosnian children, they all had the same feelings of confusion and sadness. And it was for them that the song developed.